Alright guys, so welcome to this very important transit video for the channel. So it's really interesting and we have to go over this because if anything, the details that surround this article will definitely be surprising for the many of you, including what it says in the title here. So the new $11 billion state bill would bail out the MTA, uh, freeze fare hikes and provide free bus rides. So this is a picture where you see public transit advocates holding a rally up in upstate New York, Albany, on Tuesday, February the 14th, calling on the state to fund a package of bills that they say would fully fund the MTA to make it more efficient and stop any proposed fare hikes to strap hangers. And the photo was provided by one of the senators from the state of New York. His name is Michael Giannaris, who I believe is the person that is speaking when this picture was taken. So this article was written by Michael Dorgan, and it was actually published today because today is the 16th. Tomorrow would be the 17th. So there it says, New York City lawmakers and public transport advocates held a rally on Albany this Tuesday calling on the state to pass a finance bill worth nearly $11 billion that they say would fully fund the MTA through 2026 and make it more efficient. So that definitely says a lot. The fact that this bill would fully fund the MTA throughout 2026 and not just that. What they also wanted to do is that they want the MTA to also be more efficient with that. Now the legislation knows as Fix the MTA, so that is the name of the legislation, Fix the MTA. Would also keep current subway fares at $2.75 and preventing a proposed $0.25 cents hike to $3. So that already is positive. So we don't know what will really happen. Again, it will depend on what the state of New York says about this. Honestly, if I were to be the state of New York, or for those that are in office up in upstate, they really need to think about this bill because MTA is really important. You got what is the five boroughs, New York City, you got Long Island, and of course Metro North for upstate. So if this gets passed, I just think that it would benefit more for New York City because we're talking about two things that will help us. And that would be keeping the fares at 275 for a couple more years and having a potential free bus service by a couple of years from now, which will be mentioned in a bit. And then the last one would be more beneficial to the financial sector, to the MTA, and that would be that the deficit would be built out for these next couple of years. Again, if this Fix the MTA bill gets approved by the state of New York, it would also make bus rides Throughout the city free by 2027. So look at that. So if this gets passed, if this gets passed, and we're talking about free bus rides, we're talking about you get into the bus, you don't have to pay, you don't have to put in your metro card, you don't have to put your coins in, you don't have to do none of that. So you just go on the bus and that's it. So just imagine that if this gets approved. So by that year, by 2027, that would become a reality. And it aims to make services more frequent and reliable by ensuring subways and most buses to arrive at least every six minutes every day of the week. So that definitely is going to be a challenge. But here's the thing. Worth the amount of money that's on this bill, $11 billion, we are almost for sure that with that money, not only would it make bus service free in these next couple of years, but I could almost expect that bus service should be so good at that point where, like what they mentioned here, it would run every six minutes. That would be absolutely incredible. Now, the thing is, you would want that to occur mostly during the rush hour. So in the a.m. or p.m., if you're talking about the buses running every six minutes at nighttime, let's say that this happens like at 11 o'clock at night. I don't know if this would happen, 
it would be really cool if it would happen, but just know that there are certain points of the day where you wouldn't have that much people taking the bus anyway. So I would almost assume that they would have to make adjustments to this. You do see that it says every day of the week. So that speaks volumes because we're not just talking about the week. We're talking about the weekend as well. Of course, you do have your differences between the week and the weekend. Of course, during the weekend, not that much people are going out to work. They're mostly staying at home, either resting or preparing for the other week that's coming up or hanging out. Who knows what the case may be? Then, of course, you will have those that have no choice and to work every single day, literally every single day. So having this into consideration, this would definitely benefit for those that have to go out there and work during the weekend. The fact that there will be good bus service where you would see it pass by every six minutes, that is impressive once again. So the largest portion of the package, which is around $4.6 billion, would essentially bail out the agency by plugging its forecasted budget deficit for the next four years while nearly $2 billion would go towards increasing bus service across the system by 20%. So there are two things to mention in this article. The first one is that in the first portion, the some portion of the amount of the bill, where you have $4.6 billion, that money would be used to get rid of the deficit that is forecasted within the budget. So those $4.6 billion would be enough to erase the deficit for these next four years so if it were to be approved this year this would be able to get rid of the deficit for as long as four years until 2027 and then from there we will want to figure out how they would want to approach things especially when we look at the financial sector within the mta and now the second portion there it says that they will be dedicating two billion dollars towards increasing bus service across the system and with with the fact that they are giving in two billion dollars this would increase service by 20 percent i would almost assume right now there will be lots of people saying well why why not 30 percent why not 40 percent why not 50 percent why just 20 percent should they gave more money in that instance so that they could improve service even more why just 20 percent so there definitely could be a lot of questions asked by many people who see this video. And for those that check out this article, why just 20%? But at the end, I just feel like at least they're doing something. It's better that they're doing nothing. Because if they weren't doing nothing, then it would just make things worse. And we would be seeing ourselves with a fair hike for this year. But now that this is in play, this is definitely going to be interesting on to how... Things will be rolling on within the transit world. So two billion would be going to increasing bus service, which is in dire need, and that would definitely be a good idea. Around 1.4 billion dollars would be allocated to the agency to account for a 27% dip in ridership numbers compared to 2019 levels. So that 1.4 billion will be assured to cover the losses. That the MTA experienced during a pandemic, which is practically what they're trying to say there. Because when we had free bus service during the pandemic, and look, that went on for months. That went on for months. Yes, it did definitely feel good to have free bus service, but you did know that at a specific point, that definitely were going to end. So they're also using that about that amount of money uh, to try to account for the losses that occurred during that time. Now, those that were present in, it's not really a protest, but it was a rally. So the, so the elected officials that were present in that rally were state senators Michael Giannaris, Jessica Ramos, John Liu, Kristen Gonzalez, were among those that are from Queens. However, for assembly members, you had Zoran Mandani, Alicia Heinemann, Juan Ardila, and Jessica Gonzalez Rojas. Who was also present and as well as assembly member robert uh, robert cowell from brooklyn which i am familiar with because i had heard him before so it's interesting to know that he was also part of this rally so that also says a lot about this assembly member maybe he is really concerned about the state of the transit world here within the boroughs and not just the boroughs but in the state in general and not just that 
an assembly member from Manhattan, Tony Simone, was also within this event. Now, in terms of transportation advocate groups, you had a uh, Riders Alliance and also Permanent Citizens Advisory Committee, which I believe they're referred to as PCAC. I remember meeting one of the members from that group years back. And as well as transportation alternatives. So that definitely is good that not only you had elected officials present, but as well as transportation advocacy groups, which is probably by far the most important group to participate in a rally like this. Because if we're talking about something that is MTA related, we are expected to see transportation advocacy groups. Now, Giannaris, who is sponsoring the bill in the state Senate, said the legislation would provide long-term solutions to the cash trap agency. Mamdani is sponsoring the bill in the assembly. So the MTA is on an express track towards fiscal calamity, and it is imperative we intervene to save and improve the nation's most important transit system, GNR has said. Freezing fares, improving service, and providing free bus service would be game changers that would set the tone for the rest of the country and put the MTA on solid footing for a better future. And we will check out uh, that video in a bit because I believe that's the only one. It was about like two minutes from what I recall. So the bill will gradually eliminate fares on local buses and select buses by the year of 2027. Again, if this were to be passed, this would be incredible if this were to happen. Because if there's one thing that we will definitely tackle by this going on is the controversy of fare evasion. We definitely know that you will have your people out there that will either jump on uh, on the turnstile, ask for a ride on the bus, you name it. So if this were to get passed by this year, 2027, they wouldn't have to do that despite trying to get away with the cops. So if this were to get passed by the year 2027, all they have to do is just get on the bus and that's it. However, you will see that the free bus period will be rolled out in phases. So the first borough that would be getting this is the Bronx, which would be in 2024. The next borough would be Brooklyn, so that would be 2025. Queens would be 2026. And then both Manhattan and Staten Island would go fare free in 2027. So let me know what you guys think in terms of the boroughs being, what boroughs should have been set as priority for this potential proposal that the elected officials are trying to do with the free bus service. In my opinion, I would say right now, this definitely has to do with a demographic thing. Again, we just have to be honest. That's just the way it is. More than likely, what's going on is when they looked at the numbers with fare evasion, they probably noticed that the Bronx had the most numbers, then followed by Brooklyn, then followed by Queens, then followed by Manhattan, and then Staten Island. Again, that's just my guess. More than likely, they had to refer to at least some sort of statistics. It cannot be possible that they did this because more than likely they had a dice and then they gambled it and then they said, oh, you know what? Looks like the Bronx goes first because the dice says so. No, I don't think so. So I definitely think that they had to do some sort of analytical research and find out which borough was suffering from massive numbers of fair evasion. Again, that's what I think and it makes a lot of sense so Bronx would be first Brooklyn would be second Queens would be third Manhattan would be fourth and then Staten Island would be the last one so we're looking at we're looking into next year if this gets passed if the bill gets passed Bronx would be the first borough that gets free bus service that will definitely be interesting now in terms of the cost of the free bus program it would start initially in the value of 147 million dollars for the year of 2020 24. However, though, here's where we start to panic because you do see that in a span of three years, the value is going to go up by, I would probably have to say right now, by like a thousand percent because look, you're going from 147 million, but then it will go up to 778. But I feel like the reason why it gets up to that portion is more than likely that's the time when you'll have all boroughs with free bus service. So obviously the value will go up. And so that's how much money that the state would have to pay in order for this to be accommodated. So from 147 million uh, next year, 2024, 
by the year 2027, it will be $778 million. So this bill also aims to stop the MTA from increasing subway and bus fares. This definitely is a great idea because you will have many people out there that are saying, based on the service that we're having right now, it's definitely not worth paying $275. I'd rather just hop in for free, ask for a ride because that's the way I think. Then you'll have other people out there that will say the fare should be lower because it's not fair. We're still going through a post-pandemic era that people are still struggling to pay the rent, pay the bills, get groceries, pay for gas, whatever the case may be. So why should we keep paying $275 if we could pay something lower than that? And then you will have simply others out there that will say, hey, you know what? If they're going to have to raise the fares, then it is what it is because this is something that we've been seeing the MTA trying to avoid. But at this point, we feel like that the fare hikes will be a reality this year. So if this doesn't get passed, which I hope it gets passed because this would definitely be a game changer to the system. And this would attract people to get back to the system. If it doesn't get passed, however, then we're going to have to see a fare hike because of this. So the MTA says the price hike is necessary to plug its financial budget deficit, which is estimated to potentially reach $1.6 billion by the year of 2024 without new funding, according to the Post. The MTA is in the red despite receiving nearly $6.2 billion from the federal government in 2022 after the agency saw its ridership numbers plummet due to the pandemic. The MTA says... It needs a cash injection of $350 million to halt such a price hike and the governor back such a fair increase in her recent budget proposal. The MTA was last expected to jack up its fares in 2021, but instead froze prices in order to help boost load ridership numbers due to the pandemic. So that definitely was a smart thing to do. The fix, the MTA bill, would provide the agency with $980 million over a four-year period to offset the proposed fare hike. So $114 million would cover the year of 2023. For the year of 2024, it would cover $193 million. Then in 2025, it would cover $313 million. And then in 2026, it would cover $360 million. So there is definitely something that is alarming in terms of the, the way how the value is going up by time or as the years pass. Because you're seeing that for this year, it would be $114 million. However, you're seeing that by the end of, or by 2026, the value will double up. Or even, even more than that. To $360 million. So who knows what's the reasoning behind that. More than likely, it could be because of the fact that you're going to have so much things in action. You're going to have the Penn Station Access Project. You're going to be having the IVX Project. You're going to be having the... R211s coming in, you're going to be having so many potential projects in the works within the MTA by that time, which could re which could give the reason why this is going to be the amount of money that the MTA would need so that they could halt the proposed variant. So the bill also allocates $300 million for each tax year from 2023 to through 2026 to run subways and most buses at least every six minutes every day of the week. So that definitely is a huge responsibility. So not only did they say that they want the buses to run every six months, but as well as the subways. The only thing is, when they mentioned every six minutes, hey, with CBTC, it could run every two to three minutes or every three to four minutes. But with buses, this definitely will help out a lot. But I'm just saying with subways, if you're looking at a CBTC line, it will more than likely run every two to three or every three to four minutes. But besides that, the concept that they're trying to put here is they want to improve a service that they need it to happen because that is how you start making differences. And there's also positives for those that work within the agency itself, specifically MTA workers, where there were where there would be. $600 million within the package to cover an increase in wages for MTA workers. So that definitely is a positive. I, I, I feel that that is really good that the elected officials are doing because we all have to understand that 
if it's not them doing the work, then who's going to be doing the work? And when I'm talking about work, I'm talking about station enhancements, station station maintenance, uh, track maintenance, track replacement, signal maintenance, uh, s uh, signal replacement or switch replacement or sig uh, or switch maintenance. Everything that has to do with infrastructure related. We can all agree right now that not not everyone has the capability of doing that. Only those that have the capacity to do those type of things should be doing it. And we have those that are within the MTA that are getting the job done. And with this, within the bill, it will definitely look good uh, for those hard workers that get the job done every week and every weekend. So that does it. That was the article. Once again, a really, really important news that is given by the state of New York for this week. Once again, this was done. On February the 14th, this rally up in upstate New York, where you had a group of state senators, a group of assemblymen from the city. You also had key transportation advocacy groups that were also present in this rally once again, where the goal is to pass a bill that is called Fix the MTA. This will definitely be a game changer because there are lots of things that we have to keep in mind here, first of all. This will help the MTA in a positive way financially because if the bill were to get passed, like what is mentioned over here, it would be $4.6 billion that would be needed to bail out the deficit for the MTA for these next four years. In terms of fare hikes, well, if this bill were to get passed, all we know is that for these next four years, the fare will stay at two seventy-five. dollars and no fare hikes would be needed if the fares, if if the bill gets passed, and not just that, a couple of billions would be also invested into improving bus service. Well, not really improving bus service, even though they did mention that. But the goal here also is that they want to make service free for all five boroughs, and what they're doing is they want to do it by phases. And once again, here is where they mention what would be the priorities, which boroughs would be going first. It had to be somewhere around here. It would be over here. Now, just keep in mind, it's not just local bus. It's also select bus that would also be free if the bill would be passed. But let me know, guys, what you think about the priority, about Bronx being first, Brooklyn being second, Queens being third, and then Manhattan and Staten Island being the last ones. The positives here about this bill, too, is that that they want to improve service so that service, well, not service, but so that subways and buses could stop every six minutes, which is something that would definitely look good because we're talking about people that are trying to get to work. And if the bill gets passed and all of a sudden now you're having service run every six minutes, this looks really good. This looks really good, and it will also alleviate the issue of overcrowding at stations. And I also think one of the many positive things about this bill is that there will be a couple of millions that will be uh, given to MTA workers, which is the most important thing, because at the end, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to go on the train, go on the bus, you name it. So it's really good that they thought of that also within this bill package. And so that's what's going on. So let's see which video is it. Let's let's see if it's able to play here. Let's give it a shot. So this is the long one. I think this one is the one with two minutes. So let's play it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, John Lou. You did an amazing cheering job. I've been fighting a sore throat, so forgive me if I don't project as well as the assembly member. But it is no secret to anyone that has been in New York City over the last couple of years that the MTA is broken and needs fixing. And when we talk about fixing the MTA, we're not talking about putting a band-aid on the problem. We're not talking about scraping a couple of nickels together to get them through another year and then facing the same problem again next year. We're talking about real structural change that will put the MTA on sound fiscal footing going forward forever. And what does that mean? 
That means the kind of money to make it a world-class mass transit system. We are trying to get people back on the subways. We are trying to get people back to work. Well, we can't do it if we don't have a mass transit system that's working, that is safe, and that works for them with the increased service that people expect. We can't do it if we don't provide free buses to get people back on the buses and back uh, riding mass transit and off the streets in other ways, including in cars. We need to do this. We need to freeze fares because if you want to convince people to get back on the subways, the last thing you should ask them to do is to pay more to get on them. That's right. Yeah. True. We need to increase service so that we get those six-minute rides that everyone expects and wants. So you're not standing on the platform for a half an hour waiting for a train to show up. That's right. And we need to provide free buses to change the way we do business, to shake people in New York City from thinking that things are the way they always have been and always will be. Free buses, frozen fares for the subways, increased service for both. That is the way we get the city back on its feet, and that is what we're here to say needs to happen in the budget that's going to pass next month. Thank you, Zoran, for playing such a great role in helping put this together. My colleagues in the Senate have been terrific. Andrew Bernardis has been fighting for mass trans in the MTA for so long, as well as Jessica Ramos and John Liu. That's all my colleagues who are here in the Senate. Natalia Fernandez, who just walked in. Good timing. Uh, and we are just representative of dozens of more of our colleagues who are maybe at one of these other press conferences upstairs right now. Can do it. But I want to thank the advocates for making the trip up here. <laughs> and for fighting the fight that's going to get us where we need to go. Thank you all very much. Well, look at that. That was a really, really, really passionate, direct, no-nonsense speech coming from one of our state senators. Once again, that was Michael... Giannaris. I just think that was really positive. It's really good that we are trying to get things done to try to fix the MCA. Obviously, the bill itself. Thank you, John Lou. <laughs> Obviously, the name of the bill says a lot, fix the MCA. So, what he just said there, it makes a lot of sense. The only way that you want people to get back within the system is to make it safe to avoid the fares from going up and to make the buses free. And this is also really good because this this proposal that they're doing here by also making the buses free, this will reduce the issue of fare evasion by like almost 50 to 60% because obviously the remaining will be people fare evading on the subway. But it's great that they're doing this. And what they said was that they want service to be every six minutes and that they will try their best to see if they could get this pass. And I did notice that in a portion of that speech, he did say that this bill is going to be within the budget. So I don't really know what that means. I'm not no politician. So assuming if he said that, then what if this is already official? Who knows what the case may be? But I just feel an article like this needs needs to be put priority on this channel because i've been noticing that a lot of viewers like to be aware of what's going on within the state of, of the mta is there going to be differences is there going to be a miracle going on or is it gonna or is there going to be a decline for these next couple of years and he also said something very very bold where he said that he wants the mta to be a world-class system and we all have to be really real when we refer to world-class system if we really want the mta to be a world-class system there has to be a lot of things that need to be fixed the most important thing would be improving service on both aspects subway and bus to avoid the fare hikes from going up and for these projects that we have been seeing in the capital construction budget or in the reviews that i've done in this channel where i discuss the potential future projects that the MCA may have because of what was proposed within those board meetings so uh, if all those projects get done where we have extensions coming left and right where we have the IBX coming where we have the Penn Station coming uh, where let's say hopefully if it's a miracle that this may happen where you'll have a try a tri airport shuttle where one train could take you to or let's just say for example a train could take you to LaGuardia to GFK and to Newark. That would be absolutely stunning. But who knows what's going to happen with this. 
I want to have high hopes, but we also need to realize that this is easier said than done. These politicians that were present in this rally, they could say all of this, but at the end, it's the state of New York that gives the okay to everything. So who knows what the governor will say about this? Obviously, what they're trying to do here is they want to get the votes. They want to get reelected. And the way that you do that is if you get projects done, which is one of the obvious things that you got to do as a elected official. And if they pass this, if this, if this gets passed by the state of New York, this is going to look really good. My only concern is out of all of this that was mentioned within the Vicks the MTA bill, there's clearly one thing that they miss, and that is subway crime. But you did, men you did see that the state senator mentioned that he wants the subways to be safer. So by him saying that, let's just hope it actually becomes safer. Because we have been seeing so much horrible things going on in the subway where you have MTA workers getting slashed, harassed, potentially killed too, threatened by the mentally ill, by the homeless that hang out in the station. You see people that get shoved into the tracks by people who unfortunately are not thinking straight, who have issues, and they have all sorts of things that are going on with the subway. So by this bill being really positive, we also have to address the safety of the New Yorker that gets onto the system because that also counts. And so they're going to have to do something about that. So hopefully it, subway crime could be one of the many priorities that are also set into the fix the MTA bill. So let me know what you guys think of this. We are going to get into the next article for just a few minutes and then that's it because the, uh, the only thing that I wanted to mention in this video was this, to go over this, to really see what they're trying to do here. And is it going to really make a difference? For me, it's definitely going to make a difference. Because this also says that the state is fed up to seeing the state of the MTA, where you have a deficit that's going to roll on for years. You have fare hikes going up, which will potentially lead to low ridership. You have subway crime that's going up. And you have service that is practically really bad to know that we are nearly years away from 2030. So when we factor in all the things that I just said there, I absolutely feel like that it's time that there's a revamp, that there is a revival, because I feel like that's exactly what it is here. So real quick, we just want to go ahead and just mention this here, because this was something that I posted in the community section, and I also did a poll. So I definitely would love to know what the viewers make of this. But this was posted today by the Queen's website where it says uh, lawmakers uh, within Queen's want the Elmhurst Long Island Railroad Station to be reopened. So specifically, Grace Menk is getting support from Western Queen's lawmakers as she renews the efforts of reopening uh, the LIRR Elmhurst Station after closure decades ago, where in a new letter to the interim president of the railroad, which also was signed by local and city-state elected officials, uh, Meng said that reopening the station could be an economic boon for Elmhurst and the surrounding neighborhoods, once again providing its residents access to the city and also the rest of Queens. Da -da 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 -da. It began providing service first in 1927, uh, Elmhurst and surrounding communities with nearly 60 years until it was unfortunately shut down and destroyed in 1985, unfortunately because of low ridership. However, the population within this area has grown significantly since the station was closed, and obviously if you were to reopen it, it would be a faster commute to the city for the residents that live nearby the station. Now, in 2013, uh, the railroad made a survey of potentially reopening the station, and generally, 1,700 peak period passengers would average nearly 3,800 trips per day. Uh, for State Senator Jessica Ramos, re reopening the station is going to relieve some of the pressure off the crowded streets on the number 7, which is definitely a really good idea. So if they reopen Elmhurst Station, it will definitely help the area, obviously, getting to the city faster, and that it alleviates a lot of the overcrowding on the number 7 line. So let's see what else is there to offer. I think that's about it. 
the only thing that we have to show here that is very important is this picture that was provided by Congressman Grace Meng, who unfortunately I don't know what area she specifically covers. And I'm just going to go by common sense. She probably must represent the Elmhurst area because if she's fighting for Elmhurst stations to open back is because she more than likely serves that specific area within Queens. So this is the picture that she provided in terms of the proposed location for the station of Elmhurst. So in the yellow, it would be the location of the station. So Elmhurst station, if it were to be reopened, she wants it to be between Broadway and Whitney and Cornish avenues. And the branch that would be represented by Elmhurst station would be the Port Washington branch. So if anything, I would definitely like not only for the ambassador of the PWB to give the input on this, but as well as for the viewers that reside within uh, this area or this region of Queens. Let me know what you guys think. Does this help? Will this really make a difference? Or will it just be a waste of time and money? And yet another wasteful project that the MT has proposed on. For me, basing off what we see here, it would definitely be helpful because, look, Penn Station to what side is far. And then after what side, we're talking about Metzwool's Point. So you're going from... What is it, 60th Street? No, 61st Street in Queens. All the way until at least, I don't know, 100 and... I'm taking a guess here. 120th Street? Again, I'm just taking a guess. So that's that's a long, long trip from one station to the other. And by having a station nearby and the fact that it's Elmhurst, it will definitely be important because if anything, Elmhurst is well known within Queens. Elmhurst is definitely a good candidate to have a station again based once again based on the history because they did mention that the station was open in the past but because of low ridership and the struggles that went on with the station in the past they had to close it down and so ever since they closed it down a growing population has been evident within this area and now you have congress people like grace men who wants this to get reopened again so there you have it. I, to me, I think I am 100% for this because this will definitely make things way much easier for the folks at the Elmhurst area. That's definitely one of the ways you will be able to get to the city faster. Because if you're at Elmhurst and you're trying to go to Manhattan, I'm just telling you right now, the LIRR would be your best option. Especially if you live near the station. It will definitely be a big upgrade. The only thing that you should know right now is that the fare will be obviously more expensive if you choose to opt for the Long Island Railroad. Because the thing is this. And this is something that was mentioned to be by the ambassador of the Port Washington line. And as well as those that live within Queens. This whole thing about like the city ticket and all that. It's not going to happen because it just has to do with a demographic thing. And the fact that they don't want people paying cheaper within those areas. Again, this has to do with the history of... The areas that surround the Port Washington branch, specifically in Queens. And so there's just a lot of things to it that I really don't want to get more into it. But I just gave away at least a decent explanation to it. But with that in mind, I don't want to make this video longer. So with that, once again, for this video, we mainly covered this once again. And that is the proposed $11 billion state bill called Fix the MTA, which would fix the many issues that the mta is facing right now so with that in mind this does it with this video like share comment and subscribe